Thanks to Halo on Paramount Plus for sponsoring a portion of this video. There are many things that are satisfying in life. Oh! Oh! <laughs> we have to try our best to make something that is as satisfying as physically possible. If you guys can make me feel the way it feels when I do this. I know who had the most satisfying render. <laughs> it's that guy. Who's here? Whoa, Jesus. <laughs> oh. Hey, man. That was. Hey, yo. Oh my god. Oh my god. He totally just freaking. Oh my god. No, I'm good. I'm good. I just hit my head just really, really hard. Dude. Glad I got a oh, skull. It's a, it's a good one. Jay would do next to me. And he just said, render challenge question mark? I replied with why. Not like why, but like yes. Of course I'm coming down. Render challenge, I'm here. Well, it's not just any render challenge. You see, our satisfaction levels are at an all time low. We yep. hate life right now. Yep. And we need something to carry us out of this pit of despair. You know, I'm still reeling from the gross render challenge we did. I couldn't watch like half of those. Seriously, like I watched as far as I could. Was it Peter's neck? Dude, yeah. gross. That came right after the unsatisfying render challenge too. Yeah. You know, it was what are like, we doing? we're letting you guys down. We're letting ourselves down. So I think this time around, we have to truly try our best to make something that is as satisfying as physically possible. The visual is nice and clean and scratches the correct itch combined with sound design. And probably the most important thing of all, it's got a loop. That way, the satisfaction never ends. Here's the thing, like, the loop is definitely an element that makes it more satisfying, mm -hmm. but it's one of many elements you can use to make it satisfying. Yeah. For me, the perfect fit is, like, very satisfying, extremely satisfying. I think, like, a thick cut is nice, yeah, too. Thick. Anything that kind of shows something being completed. Machinery working to perfection. Loop ability, look at this. I'm Ooh. built for it, <laughs> you know? Nice sound design, that's huge for me. Clint, you did that singing bowls one. Chef's kiss. Okay, we're gonna meet right back here in one week, and I expect at that time to be satisfied. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Satisfying. Satisfying. Recently, I've been watching all these like BMX videos by this dude, Danny something. They're incredible, and he just makes these moves look so effortless, and he's hitting these jumps. It's very satisfying. So my idea is to make a skate park with a bunch of sweet jumps and a bunch of sweet tricks and you're hitting the perfect air, getting the perfect landing. My main goal with this satisfying render is time management. Oh my God, time management. I'm not the best at it. Let's just be honest. I'm not the best at it sometimes. Originally, yes, I wanted to do a BMX thing, but getting like the feet connected to the pedals and having the wheels turn at the right rate just was way too much. So instead of a bike, I'm gonna do a skateboard because I don't have time for a bike and I need to build out the actual ramp setup. So I use the spline to draw out the actual ramp and the path. And then I use that same spline just with a little bit of an ellipse right at the top for the skateboarder. At first, I went too ambitious. I had loops in there and stuff. Nah, let's just do two jumps, one final little ramp, and it's looped. I set up a nice IK rig between the feet and the hips and everything so we can have the skateboarder ducking down and hand animated the arms. So basically, once I had a version animated, I knew I was safe, and I got that on day two, which it's the best feeling ever. Cause I took the other two days to just spice it up. I made the lighting nice. I made the textures nice. I focused on the background a little bit and I even had time to add some details like the flag in the foreground and some birds scattered throughout. And that's about it really. It was just managing my time. I've been in boats where I have just bitten off way more than I can chew and I did not want to do this this time around. So I'm very proud of how it turned out and I hope you guys like it as well. So, you know, when I was thinking about what would be a cool, satisfying render, I had this weird flashback to when I was a kid and I walked by the toy store and they had this small duck toy thing and the ducks would kind of just go up the stairs and they'd go down the slide and it was like really relaxing to just watch them go forever. And I thought, what would be a really fun kid's toy that I could make that my younger self would really have enjoyed? What if I make this eternally looping a little catapult system for basketball where these shots are constantly being made perfectly every single time? Building that was a little bit of a challenge, which I did through the use of volume modeling. 
for each of these slides, I used what's called a spline, and I swept across that spine to make a slide. Then halfway through the slide, I created a second spline branching off it and ran that same slide shape across that. So now I have these branching slides coming from the same point. Once this was built, it actually came down to simulating. Now, I didn't want to do the hand animating thing. I actually wanted this to work, to create catapults that could actually launch balls into the hoop. I gave them what's called an inherent velocity. I set aside about a half day to just shoot hoops digitally, right? I made it in the second shot. <laughs> I don't know how it happened. Has to put it up with the buzzer. Banks it in! <laughs> Colby. And since the entire hoop and net is plastic, it's very rigid, it doesn't move around. It bounces and it rattles and it goes through the hole. And it's really satisfying. But that leaves, of course, the final stage, which is to actually get them to blend properly, right? Timing. And so what I did, I thought, it might be the best approach instead of doing all five separately. I only did the slides on the right half and the slide down the middle, which meant I got to mirror the catapults and the balls. So now you have 10 balls in perfect sync with one another and they loop perfectly because it's all timed to be identical. Kind of makes you feel like I did the first time I walked past that toy store and saw my first small duck. We have a special guest coming in the studio actually. Who's coming or is it a secret? I don't know, I have no idea. I'm kind of scared, actually. What's happening? I guess we should answer it. Uh, let me do the honors. <clears throat> oh my God. <laughs> this portion of today's video is sponsored by the Halo series on Paramount Plus. Master Chief's here to save the day and to tell you guys all about the new incredible Halo live action series inspired by the original 2001 Halo the game, which was of course only on Xbox. I don't know if you were around for that. You probably weren't even born yet, kid. Wow, I'm already so hyped about this. <laughs> hey. So it's terrifying hey, to know ever seen. Master Chief. First name, last name situation? First name, master, last name, the Chief. Dude. Matt. Wow, he, you're my greatest hero. You're probably a huge fan of the yeah. Halo universe, right? Since I was a child, yeah, well, literally. guess what? Now you can go to ParamountPlus.com and you can watch Halo the series. No way, wow. And, and I'm in it. Wow, you're yeah. in it? Yes. Mr. Course, Chief I'm himself? Yes. Look at I'm, I'm Nice. I'm you can it. jump up and down. You know how you guys are here doing cool, satisfying renders? Yeah, yeah, all yeah. the time. Well, in the Halo live action show, there's a lot of cool shots in there. How satisfying shots? Satisfying covenant kills? Super satisfying. Ren, what is one thing you love about some of your greatest movies? Good storytelling. Exactly. And you know where good story comes from? Video games. No. Well, yes, but you know why it's a good story? because it's got deeply woven personal drama that hits you right there in the heartstrings, that's why. And Halo, the series, has exactly that. They've got deeply woven personal stories between a centuries-old conflict between humanity and an alien race known as the Covenant. You combine the visual effects with those deep personal stories, and it's like, guys, I mean, what's better? They repair that back at the ship. It's fine. Did you know, Christian, that the series also stars Pablo Schreiber as Master Chief himself? Natasha McAlhoun as Dr. Halsey. And then there's also Jen Taylor, who of course plays Cortana. Cortana is the most advanced AI in the history of humanity, and she could potentially be the source of all life-saving sources. She could potentially save Earth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, Master Chief's done here. I gotta go fight the Covenant. But if you guys are interested in checking out Halo the series, go to ParamountPlus.com or just click the link in the description below. Try it for free and remember, Halo is exclusively on Paramount Plus right now. Thanks again to Halo on Paramount Plus for sponsoring this portion of the video. And uh, hey, finish the fight. Find the Halo, win the war. So for this one, you know, I think we were kind of talking about the sound design a lot. I don't know why I got it in my head that it would be really satisfying to get that kind of, you know, that sound once a drain finishes, all the water drains out of a sink or 
sometimes a toilet. And I wanted to kind of play around with doing like a liquid simulation here and basically have the corridor logo melt and then reform into itself. So kind of that idea of like molten metal satisfying, the idea of like, you know, a liquid becoming a solid. I was kind of inspired by the new Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, how that whole intro was done practically. And I was like, how would I film this practically? So kind of trying to emulate that. It was really tricky. <laughs> because I haven't done a ton of simulation. So I ended up having a 3D modeled corridor logo here. I basically then used flip fluid simulation to essentially create a fluid sim that then poured through a little funnel that I created into a mold of the corridor logo again. As this is happening, the camera's pushing forwards and doing kind of like a Hitchcock zoom. So the focal length is adjusting at the same time it's pushing in. And then by the end of this, we've got basically a liquid version of our corridor logo again. It was a definitely a fun experiment. It was one of those things where I wanted to push myself a little bit while still at the same time being able to achieve what I wanted. And I was pretty happy with the final result. And uh, I think some of the guys might be a little bit satisfied. There are many things that are satisfying in life. It's like a peaceful tickling almost, you know? It's like <laughs> visuals, sounds, feelings. They all contribute to a satisfying feeling. Mm -hmm. Another thing is inspiration. I take inspiration from literally everywhere. Last week, Cinema 4D released their newest version, and with that comes a brand new simulation system for cloths and ropes. So now I have the problem of like, what is satisfying about cloth? Well, it didn't take long for me to realize that cloth ripping has a very distinct sound to it. It's like just sharp enough to be like almost annoying, but it's tempered just enough to be satisfying. What if I have like a long, tall cloth and I have a knife, puncture through it and then rip all the way down and then pull out. And I just have an animated camera go from top to bottom at a very consistent rate so that I can take that exact same render and line it up with itself to loop forever. Traditionally, cloth sims take a very long time. But look at this. This is simulating in real time and it's ripping. Did you see that? Rip, rip. But what if I don't want it to rip in all those different places? What if I specifically want it to rip down the middle? If I just select some of these polygons here like that, when I go to select set vertex weight and under tearing, I can take my vertex map and put it in here. And now in theory, it should rip only where I told it to. Look at that, how cool is that? So now you can actually art direct exactly where it rips. That will allow me to get a very controlled cut exactly where I need it to be. I didn't want to just have the knife come in and then like drop down and leave again. It needed a little bit of personality and I can go through and keyframe animate that or I can, you know, do some mocap. Literally what I did for this whole sequence right here, I just pretended that a knife is sticking out of the end of my phone here and I was like, here, here. And just like that, I animated a knife. But I had to go through and like upload all the footage to my computer. Even though I didn't use any of the footage, I just took the camera that was animated and parented this knife to it. It was a very manual process, but it wasn't that bad. It's just like, it could be so much simpler. And this actually, oh my God, I've literally been in contact with the developers at Cinema 4D. I am desperate for this feature to be a thing. Remember the whole stained glass man video we put out like a month or two ago? I shot all those scenes with my phone and it was able to camera track the footage in real time. And there's a bunch of different apps that do that. They're great. But this one allowed it to actually directly upload to a server and then down to my computer without me having to do anything. And so this made it really nice to be able to get that footage to my computer, already tracked, scene already set up. I want to be able to just use my phone as a puppet. It. I want to use this as sort of like a point in space that is recording positional and rotational data and have that go to the computer. So you guys at Cinema 4D, I desperately need this and I'm hoping that maybe this call to action will help you incorporate this fully into the software. We have the technology to make this happen. Let's do it. But you know what? Fenner, Jordan, I'm excited to see you guys' renders. Let's do this. Okay, it has been a week and we have now reassembled to check out our final satisfaction. That's the right way to say it, right? Mm. If you guys can make me feel the way it feels when I do this, then I'm gonna love you forever. It's gonna be like that minus the effort. I am in particular need of some calming satisfaction right now because I've had a hell of a morning trying to get this final thing put together. I just need to do the simplest of like mask transitions and I spent about two hours troubleshooting it with After Effects crashing on me over a hundred times. So mark my words, as of right now, unless After Effects gets rewritten from the ground up, 
I'm not using it anymore. <gasps> that's, 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 I, I don't believe so... it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it for a second. Dude, not you underestimate second. how furious I am right now. We need to satisfy yeah. Rent. We, we need, need to satisfy Rent. Yeah. Oh, Nico, welcome. Yo, what up, Nico? I just got off a business call, and boy, am I stressed out. It sure would be great if there's just some cool renders playing on this TV that were perfect for making me chill. All right, Fitters first. Or rather, he's, he's going first. And let's see. Satisfied. That was that was nice. I like the fluid sim you got going on. It's really nice. It's very mesmerizing. Yeah. I could stare at that for a long time. I like the skladoosh. That initial. It's actually, you know what it is? It's actually a defibrillator. Oh, oh. Nice. Yeah. It's like. You know what? Until I see my render up here, I'm not going to be comfortable enough to be satisfied by anyone else. So. Ooh. This is what I've got. Oh. Good. <laughs> when the knife pushes through, you see wobbling. And then it pushes through. Like if you look at it, you can actually see the tension. It's like <laughs> and then it pushes through. This might be more satisfying than the puzzle pieces. <gasps> <laughs> this is definitely more satisfying than the puzzle pieces. Really? Yeah. Yeah. When the knife leaves and the cloth is like already deformed and stretched and saggy. Everything about this is so cool. Yeah. There's so yeah. static electricity on the knife. Yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> yeah, okay, I got I got mine out of the way. I can I'm done. I can relax. I can be satisfied. Skateboarding! Ren, this one's for you, right? just trying to get back up to the top. I'm glad, because it's that totally thing. what I would do if I was yeah. In, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in her shoes, I would do that same thing. It really feels like I'm up in a dream, like on this. Also that perspective where you think they're about to go off the edge, and then they fall and you see the ramp for the last second, it's very tasty. And we gotta shout out the fact that there's, you know, wind simulation on those flags you threw in there, those little details. Oh yeah. The droppings from the pigeons. Yeah. Oh, oh those droppings from the pigeons? Oh, I didn't even notice. Wait, what? Yeah. The pigeon drops. Oh wow, you're right. Oh, yeah. That. Nice, dude. That's a great touch. That was the last thing I added. Fresh droppings. <laughs> it was the droppings. It's all about the sound too, man. Yeah. The yeah. truck, the trucks on the wood just mm. Man, I'm so close to being fully satisfied. Just oh. not quite enough. Oh. Oh! <laughs> Basketball! Oh. Yes! This one was checking all the boxes for me, man. All the little clicks, all the little, all the balls, dude. Mm. My favorite part is that ball in the middle. The ball just perfectly <laughs> pops out right before the next one comes yeah. in. All of this is uh, physics simulation work. I was gonna ask, that was my first question, was is this simulated? Yeah, the whole thing. Sweet, man, so it works, thing. it works. Yeah, it's, it's a working machine. The thing that gives me the most satisfaction in this render is your insistence on having camphored edges. Thank you for noticing. It's like somebody took a cookie cutter into dough and just went Pew. Man, I'm so satisfied right now. I'm way too biased to judge this. Nico, you're an unbiased party here. You didn't do a render for this. Who had the most satisfying render? I know who had the most satisfying render. That guy. Wait, did I? Have... Oh, heck yeah! Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, I mean, they're all really good. But uh, you know, I've seen a lot of slicing. 
But this, I haven't seen anything like it. I'm so frustrated by how my morning went that it's hard for me to accept this, but thank you. I mean, the real winner here is the entire rest of the world now that they get to watch these animations. It's Dude. cool how different they all were, too. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like none of us really hit that same kind of thing, but they're all satisfying in their own special way. For real, though, my favorite things. Toilets, skateboards, and basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I think that you each satisfied me to completion. To the point where I don't think I need this anymore. I'm retiring my little ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we missed. I'm not gonna lie though, after all of that satisfaction, it's still not enough. I need you guys to subscribe. That'll leave me with the ultimate subscriptions faction. Subscribe to fulfill our dreams. Listen, we love doing these render challenges. We're trying to think of like fun alternate ideas on this whole idea and I think we need some comments suggesting them. Leave a comment. <laughs> you know you know what to do.